love to know how you fell in love with the game of baseball. Yeah, growing up, honestly, man, like I, I, I was a dual sport athlete. I played, so it's called AAA hockey around here. Yep. So like the highest possible level of hockey that you could play as a, you know, as a teenager. Um, I also played AAA baseball, which is the highest level you could play around here, right? Once I got into high school, um, I decided to join a program in, I guess, Ontario. That was an elite program back in the day. And going to the tournaments, you know, making my friends and seeing what's out there kind of opened my eyes to, I think I can do this, right? Um, seeing the facilities, the facilities were a big thing for me because back, back in the day, we, we used to train in like warehouses, right. uh, literally, like we had a <laughs> just a turf mound and it, it was, it was tough, but I think I chose and I fell in love with the game just because of, you know, the coaches around me that guided me correctly. They gave me the opportunity, you know, we would go down to spring training for Florida, um, seeing other players from different teams and seeing how hard they worked and knowing that I had a chance to play. Right. And then the coach that, you know, essentially helped me earn a scholarship to uh, the States. Um, he actually started the Ontario nationals. Okay. Right. And he ran the Ontario nationals until I took over really. Uh, so it's kind of a full circle here, but you know, it was about, you know, getting stronger and the opportunity of, you know, making friends at, and networking uh, out, outside of your little circle. So at the end of the day, I'm not sure if that answers the question as much, but honestly, my coaches, my coaches and the opportunities that I was given as a young kid and also to my parents, right? Like they, they put in a lot of work for me, um, you know, knowing how much elite baseball cost in Ontario at that time and day in that era, it was hard, right? So respecting my parents and making sure they, you know, understanding how much they put into helping me earn a scholarship and going down to baseball. I, I'd say I fell in love probably when I first stepped on campus at, mm -hmm. uh, at school, right? Because I didn't know what to expect. I saw what was around me. I saw, I, I met uh, players from Arizona, from Puerto Rico, uh, the Midwest. And I was like, wow, like this, this is what it is, right? And you didn't have that back home, right? It was just your guys that lived 10 minutes away from you and you're just, were just playing ball. Yeah. But, you know, I fell in love with it because, you know, they included me, we included them, we lived together. And then it just kind of took over from there. And then my passion for the game, you know, learning about, what it takes to play at the next level. Right. And that's essentially why I took over the nationals or wanted to run this program because first of all, I know how hard it is. I know how much parents put into this and families and players and coaches. And what I wanted to do was find a better way, find a better way for these players to earn an opportunity to play down South so they could experience what I experienced. Like at my wedding, uh, my roommates all came from Arizona, Chicago, the Midwest, they all were there. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people can talk about that kind of stuff too, and say they did that. But for me personally, it was, it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. I grew up, I matured, made a lot of friends and played the game that I loved growing up. Right. So like I said, I was in the draft pick or anything like that, but you don't need to be a draft pick to, to love a game. You just got to, work hard, network, uh, find an opportunity. And, and then how, how can you give back? So that's kind of why I love the game. I want to help. And I guess how I fell in love with it. That's great. Jeremy. And, you know, the next question was, you know, tell me about how the Ontario Nationals started, right? The kind of the cool. story of, you know, how it started and then where you guys are today. So you talked a little bit about that, obviously, but let's jump into that a little bit more. So when did it start? How did it start? Um, and tell us a little bit about, you know, who you guys are today and, and, and what you are as a program. For sure. Like, so the Ontario Nationals started 2007. Uh, that was probably in my, I think my grade 11 year. And um, 
first started off with a couple of teams, you know, a 16U and 18U team kind of getting our feet wet. The previous owner, I think, did a fantastic job of uh, building the program, uh, helping kids get schools, you know, building the inner city kids. Around 2015, that's when I came back. So I graduated from school in 2012. Came home, you know, I have a, I have a bachelor's in accounting. So I, you know, found a couple of jobs here. Also coached on the side, wanted to get back in the game, right? And 2015, 2019, I, I really put my, <laughs> I got my feet real wet. And I learned about the ins and outs of the program. I, I started networking. 2019, I took over the program as the president and the owner. And obviously for people that remember, that's literally right before COVID hit. Yeah, no doubt. Right, 2019, the fall I took over. 2020, we had COVID. 2021, we had COVID. So it was tough. Like we were training. We weren't getting many games. We couldn't go south of the border. Um, but we still found ways to help these kids find opportunities to play college baseball for whatever fit that might be. Right. And where we are today, honestly, we've made a whirlwind. Like I I've learned to find other people to help me. Right. We have administration. Now we have our coaches that, uh, you know, they played at a high level. Some, some coaches have been draft picks. Some coaches, we have coaches that played Oklahoma State, Troy State, you know, list goes on. Um, so a lot of coaches play Juco. They played at Canisius. There's a lot of coaches that were alumni that are coming back to help, just like I was, right? And that's kind of what I wanted, right? I wanted to make it like a family. I wanted, to, I wanted it to be something that kids could be proud of. And I, and I'm starting to see it now. Like we, we rebranded this year as well with our new, with our new logo, um, a new store, all that kind of stuff. We're start our training. We hired Dr. Rob. He, for those that don't know Dr. Rob, he works with in, in MLB, uh, in the science department kind of thing, like research and development. Um, he's trained a lot of kids back here. I don't know if you guys remember, you know, Calvin Ziegler, yep. uh, Dr. Rob is responsible for him, right? For helping him get to where he is today. Like players like that around Ontario. So bringing him in, enhancing our strength and conditioning program, uh, our pitching program. Uh, our coordinators are fantastic. Always have a plan each day. Uh, and the thing is too, with these types of programs, you have to, everything's not going to be perfect, especially in Canada. But what can you do every year to make sure your, your, your players receive the most benefit out of it? So coming into this current season before we play, like, so 2022, 2023, we, we sat down as a staff. We talked about it. Strength and conditioning and pitching was, was our big focus. Our hitting program has been fantastic, run by uh, Aaron McKay and Andy Leader. And they do a fantastic job with – you know, T work, soft toss, all this kind of stuff, progression drills, same with our fielding, right? But what can we do to enhance the pitching and strength conditioning? So we hired a a strength and conditioning coach, right? That's been fantastic. Uh, Dr. Rob has come in and just helped us kind of get to the next level, right? And you can kind of see with our players, a lot of our players have made a lot of jumps, whether it's in velo or the way their body looks, uh, maturity levels, you know, that they can now talk pitching, right? There, there's a difference between going on the mound and just throwing a fastball rather than understanding why you're doing this or setting up three pitches. So if you throw this pitch, what's going to happen three pitches next, right? Um, they understand that kind of stuff now, right? Like uh, the feel for their body. So I think where our program is now, it's, it's growing for sure. Um, we have the right people in place to kind of help myself out. And the family's out, you know, teaming up at Diamond Allegiance was, was a whirlwind. It worked out really well for us. Um, even with Team Elite, we've teamed up with Team Elite in, in Georgia. They've been so helpful with us and um, just giving our players opportunities to go down south and play in tournaments or play with their coaches 
and learning and all and this whole and this whole time it's about learning right it's about what can you do that separates yourself but at the same time being humble about it right you don't have to say tell people you know everything because i don't know everything you know mm-hmm. nobody oh, yeah. does and, it, and, it, and if you can talk to different people like yourself uh you know brooke and brad and jamie from team elite they've been so helpful with us and then our coaches too with the experiences they've had just helping these players and i i i feel that it's a different vibe this year and like i said we're we're so excited to play outside in about three, four weeks or whatever it is, and <laughs> get to our games. But I see this working like right now. We got six teams, so we got two 14U teams, one 15U, one 16U, one 17U, and 18U. Um, all of our 18U, I guess, 2023 graduates that are this year are all committed to schools. Awesome. And same with our 2022s past year, everybody was committed to schools. So obviously, something's working, right? Um, and it's not just schools that you think like we don't have kids going to Florida state, you know, because why would we, (laughs) you know, like at the end of the day, like you might have a kid here and there, but we have kids going to schools that we know that they're going to go perform and they're going to succeed. They're going to get a couple years development with, if it's a junior college and then maybe go play somewhere else at a power five or something like that. Once they have the experience and players that have gone to four year schools, you know, we have a couple D one guys right now, um, D two and also NAIA. Uh, so these kids are, and the main thing I tell these kids, it's something that we really preach. It's yeah. Development for sure. But what are you going to do when you go to school? I want them to finish. I want them to graduate. I want them to come home with a piece of paper that shows I accomplished this. Yep. And that's kind of the focus because baseball is going to take you, you know, you obviously we'll play baseball for as long as we can, but at the end of the day, what's next? Absolutely. And I really want these kids to graduate. I want them to graduate and come home and, and be proud of, like I, I did this. Right. And that's how I felt too. Like when I came home, I'm like, oh, man, I did this four years living by myself with my roommates and then coming home and all of those experiences. I, I, that's all I want for these kids. And, um, and it's working, it's working. So I, I hope, you know, going, going forward into the future. Um, obviously, like I said, there's things that we need to work on and we're going to reevaluate at the end of uh, the season here, but things are headed in the right direction. And we're, we're really proud to say that, you know, we're helping families and we're training. Uh, we've got the right coaches in place. And, you know, I, I, can't, I can't wait for what's, what's gonna happen, so. Awesome, Jeremy. Um, next question for you. So, you know, obviously things are, are, are different, right? North of the border, south of the border, and, you know, the further south you get, the probably more <laughs> different they are, right? But could you give us a, a year in the life of, an Ontario Nats player? Like, what does it look like from, you know, from January to January? What's my schedule look like? What am I doing? What, what tournaments, what leagues am I playing in? All that type of stuff, you know? Yeah. So, so for example, this year, so the way our program works in Ontario is we are uh, September to August, right? That's kind of how our fiscal year works. And so September, the new, the new teams come in, um, we have a fall ball season, obviously. So our 14 U's and 15 U's and 16 U's play a consistent fall ball season around here. So they have about, you know, 15, 20 games with teams around here, four games on the weekend, practices during the week. And the whole point of that is for our, our coaches to evaluate what they have, right? Teach them a little bit, you know, no, work on the game. So when we go indoors, we know what we need to attack, right? Um, our 17s, 18s, they they have they have a smaller um i guess schedule here because we do try and go on a fall trip to visit different universities and colleges so this past year i think we were on the road for about 14 days and we went from man (laughs) new york to pennsylvania to ohio kentucky tennessee georgia like this year we played kennesaw you know, we played USC Upstate previous years. We played the University of Georgia and um, we actually had to have a player at the University of Georgia right now, uh, Blake Gillespie. 
um, Timo, he actually played for Timo Lee as well and got the opportunity to play there. So, um, so they do that. Uh, obviously when we come back after that fall trip, we have a ton of videos and the goal is to help those graduates find schools, right? Obviously if they did well on the trip, they're probably going to sign real, real fast because the coaches, you know, firsthand they saw them, right? right. Yeah. Um, after that, you know, November to, I guess, April, we're training three, four times a week in our indoor facility. It's called Blue Chip Sports in Kitchener, Ontario. Um, so each player, each team comes in three, four times a week and, you know, we're lifting weights, we're doing our strength program, we're uh, going through our hitting progressions, pitching progressions, fielding progressions. And the way we do, we block it up into weeks, right? It's not just we come and do the same thing every day uh, in the gym or whatever. It's, it's, it's blocked up. So November, December is a lot of light stuff, baseball side, right? Like a lot of our guys don't even throw, which is, which is fine. We, we really get into the weights, building that strength that we need, and then working on technique and mechanics of pitching and hitting, making sure our swing's right, you know, all that kind of stuff. So when we get back into January after the, Christmas break, New Year. Um, we still don't go too hard yet. We're still pretty light, uh, but we're, we're getting there. And then when February comes around, we start going hard, right? So our our pitchers have gone through their progressions and their throwing programs and their lifting programs. So we've been throwing live indoors since I guess mid February, okay. um, and we work up with pitch counts and all that kind of stuff. We're not in here throwing a hundred pitches, you know, first day, like <laughs> our guys are probably at uh, 60 pitches right now still. And um, so we do that and we, we work on going, going live with that at batters, um, working on pitch sequences, uh, hitters working on two strike approach, all that kind of stuff. So we do that until April, uh, end of April. It's um, also too, I guess in March break, uh, we go to a spring training in Vero beach um kind of breaks up the winter you know for yeah. for kids so we do that and that's fantastic we've had a lot of great times there um and then may comes and our season starts so the way our season works is we play in the, our league it's called the cpbl a lot of great teams in the league uh great coaches uh great organizations um four games a weekend so you play a four game series against one team each weekend and you, and then you have a couple practices during the week. Some, sometimes some midweek games you play in May and June, you probably it's constant. There's no weeks off. You just keep playing. And then July is pretty much our, I guess you want to call it tournament month. So for example, um, our 16s and 17s are going to the WWBA this year. Uh, this is actually our first year doing that. So we want to see how it goes, but obviously you know for our guys to get opportunities in the scene there's there's not many options we have right like nobody's coming down to uh you know london or st mary's or toronto to watch our players uh at 10 o'clock in the morning right. for for a double header right so we go play in our tournaments uh we do that and then uh end of july early august is our championships for our league so depending on how we do, we compete there. And then, and then the season's done, right? Season's done. And we have about two, three weeks to relax. And that's kind of what we say to our families is take those two, three, three, two, three weeks, relax, go to the cottage, you know, go on family week vacations, get away from the game a little bit. Um, and then we start back up in uh, September. This actually, this past year, what we did was, we took a group down to uh, Lake Point in Georgia with Team Elite because obviously with our partnership with Team Elite, we try and obviously get down there as much as we can. So we went down there for a week in August and great experience, honestly. Like it was, they were so accommodating to us. The hospitality was fantastic. So hopefully we can do that again this year. We'll see how it works, but um, if not, it's all good. But that's kind of like a whirlwind of what, what we do. It's, I guess, half the year spent indoors. Yep. And the rest is outdoors, I guess, is as much as we can 
play, right? But uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the, it? Was it's the CPP CPPBL, correct? Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that and and what that looks like and how many games you guys play and um, you know what are some of the other teams like? How how does that work up there? Yeah, so the CPBL, it's the Canadian Premier Baseball League. Uh, I think it was established in 2015. Um, there's 11 organizations in the league, uh, teams from 14U all the way up to 18U. Uh, each team, each age division, they probably get, you know, in terms of league games, you get about, I guess, you know, 30 to 35 league games. Uh, within your age group um it's it's uh it's kind of it's structured fine like i said the uh, the the board of directors they make the the schedules you go play your games keep track of your score your stats all that kind of stuff then you have your league championship at the end uh this year they're actually starting uh all-star games too uh for each age division so we'll see how that works um, the all-star games are going to be, I believe, August 4th to 6th. Uh, so that should be a great opportunity for a lot of these kids. Um, but other than that, it's just, it's 35 games. It's, uh, 11 organizations in the, in the league. Um, yeah, that's that's much. That's all I can say about that. It's how, it's how much do you guys have to travel for that? Um, like, you know, where where are the games held? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so there's there's teams. So we're in Kitchener Waterloo, which is kind of central, to be honest, Southwest Central. Um, we travel as far as so. There's a team Windsor. There's Windsor in our league. They're about three hours from where we are, okay. right? So if we were to say play them for a four game series, or they were to play us we would play four games at their home field. Usually what you do is, so there's a team in Toronto that we would play at their home field one day for two, a double header, and they would come play at our home field on the next day for a double header. Um, so there's teams in Toronto, the GTA area, Windsor, London, uh, Burlington. Uh, it's kind of, I'd say the closest to us is probably I'd say 45 minutes. Uh, the farthest is about three hours and oh there's also a team from Ottawa actually as well so if if so if, if a team is playing Ottawa say in a in a series they uh, same thing right you go you go stay in a hotel for a couple of nights and you play four games or vice versa they come down here and play us so it, it's run pretty well in terms of the scheduling like you you get you get your games um, you know where you're going. Uh, you kind of work with each individual program and their uh, and their leaders and the director of baseball operations to schedule times, games, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, they, they do say too, I, and I strongly believe this as well, it is a very competitive league, which I love. Um, the teams are great. You're not, you're not really going into a weekend saying, I'm going to mercy this team four games in a row it's pretty competitive like you could win two games on a saturday and then get destroyed on a sunday yeah. right you got to have pitching depth in this league four starters four or five starters some spot starters they kind of mimic in a sense they kind of mimic the college season right you play series yeah. so it's kind of getting kids ready for the next level we use bb core bats in in this league too right which which is fine um but yeah, that's that's kind of what it is. It's like I said, it, it's one of the best leagues in, in Canada, I would say. I love it. I think it's a really cool concept. Yeah. Um, so two questions that kind of go together and you've kind of already answered both of them, but I, I kind of like to put a bow on them. So the sure. first one is, um, you know, if you could use one word to describe your program, what would that be? And then the follow up to that is. You know, who are the people that are instrumental with you, right, that help you bear out that on a daily basis? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, let's see. Uh, one word to describe our program. I'd say student athlete. Uh, maybe that's two words, but student it's athlete. Hyphen, it's hyphenated. We'll, we'll right. Notice. So <laughs> and the reason and the reason for that is because, like I was saying earlier, 
baseball is great. Training's great. Coaches are great. The game is, we love this game, but my goal behind this whole thing is I want my families, my players to understand the, the value of education and um, earning a scholarship to pay for that education, but making sure you finish um, and graduate from where, wherever you go. Whether, whether you stay in school in Canada or go to the States, it doesn't really matter. Whatever the fit for you is, I want guys to commit and dedicate themselves for that time period so they can come home and feel accomplished, right? Um, it's not for me. It's not for any of our coaches. It's for them, right? And, and then I know if they do this, they're going to be fine at, when, when, they're, when their time with baseball is done, right? And the game is done. They have to hang up their cleats what are they going to do next? Right. It's hard to, especially in this day and age, um, you know, graduating from a four-year institution or getting your master's or whatever it is, it's important. And, and if you can do something like that uh, and then follow your dreams and, uh, and then work and then start working and building network and, and uh, building connections within your network, I think it's really important. And I, and like, for me, for example, like a lot of the coaches that we have uh, that are alumni, like they've, they've graduated, they have a degree in whatever they have a degree in, they're still helping coaching, but they're also working in their field and, and they're building a life for themselves. Right. And that's the goal, right? Like you can't, no one's going to play baseball until they're 65. And if you are, congratulations. And, um, but so what do you do with that, right? What do you do with that, with that uh, opportunity you get at an early age? So we call these our prime years, I guess. You know, you're in high school and you go to college and then what do you do after college? If you get an opportunity to play professional baseball, that's obviously that's the goal, right? But you're not going to play professional baseball for that long. So we really strive to build proper student athletes, building routine, you know, committing to where you commit, uh, dedicating yourselves to not only like the training facility in the weight room, but finding time ways to do your homework too. You know, so we have in our facility, we actually have like an upstairs place where sometimes we find kids coming early to practice and actually doing their homework before practice starts. And, you know, that makes me really happy because they're actually uh, managing their time. Cause you know, as well as I do, um, <laughs> when you go to school or college, like you got to be able to manage your time and you got your friends, you got your school, you got to eat, you got to go to practice. You got two a days. Um, you got to do your homework. Like, how do you do that? And if you, and if you, <clears throat> and if all you focus on in a baseball organization is training and, and lifting and hitting, which is all important things. If you don't focus on the other stuff too, you're not setting these kids up for, for the on the right path when they go to school they're going to go to school and they're going to forget to do their homework and they're not going to be able to play and they're not going to have a good gpa in order to play or they're going to hang it out with the wrong crowd or something like that so we talk about these things and but that's i say student athlete because i i really value education i value baseball and you put those two together or whatever sport you're in, it doesn't even have to be baseball. If you're a basketball player, great. Or a football player, great. But putting the sport and the and the education together, I think is, and if you can get kids to understand why both are important at the same time, not just not just the one, I think you've done a good job, and mm -hmm. and and they will they will go on and actually succeed in what they do. Yeah, uh, our founder, uh, Sandy Ogg, talks about, you know, in his you know, years of uh, being the chief human resource officer at Unilever, that he would always make it a point to uh, do their best to hire student athletes. They were hiring, you know, thousands upon thousands of college graduates every year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he made it a point um, as a company uh, to focus on the student athlete because the student athlete knows how to do the things that you're talking about and they learn how to do those things 
you know, through sport, through coaches. Right. And I think it's so important to have, you know, people like you that are in this industry that are so focused on that. Right. And that's, that's really important. So obviously you're focused on that as the president and owner. Um, cool. We've heard you talk about Dr. Rob today. Um, I've had uh, some, some great interactions with someone I'm sure that you'll mention here. Um, but who are some of the people that really help this engine go um, and, and, and support you and what you're doing? Yeah, so we, so our director of um, communications, Harmony, uh, she's been fantastic. We brought her on this year. Um, honestly, she does a lot of the things that I used to do, but I've learned to hand things over, right? Uh, at the end of the day, I'm a big control freak. And it took, it took a lot for me to, okay, Harmony, <laughs> you, you, can, you can do this now. And, and honestly, she's run with it. You know, it's been fantastic. Everything, uh, you know, the communications to the parents and the families, hotels, newsletters. Uh, we're actually hosting a media day here in a couple of weeks, like stuff like that, we, I could have never done because I had no time. Yeah. And I think it's important, not just, not just all, also her, you said, Dr. Rob, our coaches, our hitting coordinators, Andy, Aaron, our fielding coordinators, our pitching coordinators, Jordan and Brady, strength coordinators, Kyle Frey, um, catching coordinator, Chad Dubé, um, all these guys, coaches, instructors, uh, our staff initially essentially is um, fantastic. Like our head coaches at uh, our coaches on our 18 U staff, uh, Chris and Jack, you know, coaching 18 U is tough and they all have jobs and all that kind of stuff, but they put so much effort into helping these kids. Right. Um, our, our youngest team with uh, coach Scott and, and his staff, our 15 U team with coach Mark, like these guys, like, for example, coach Scott and coach Mark, they both have like three other kids. Right. And, and so for them to put all the effort they, they have and the passion they have to helping these kids understand the program and understand the values of the program. It means a lot to me because yeah, it takes a lot away from my plate so I can just focus on ways to help the program get better and improve and be able to have conversations like this with you, you know, um, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do this back in the day. If, yep. if I didn't have these, these staff members supporting myself and supporting the program. And so I, I'm, I'm forever grateful for everybody that's uh, chose to join the internationals, whether player, coach, family instructor, because they do make my life easier. And uh, this job is hard. This job is difficult, but I wouldn't have it any other way. And like I said, some of these guys that I mentioned, I hope I mentioned everybody. I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, if you did, you'll hear from them. That's for sure. Yeah, right? I'll, hear, I'll, hear, I'll hear from them. But I, I try to mention everybody that we have. And like, like I said, a lot of our staff members, there's guys I mentioned, you know, Chad Dubé, our catching coach, played at Troy State for four years, drafted by the San Francisco Giants. Um, Jason Porges, one of our 15-year coaches, played at Troy State, played for Team Canada, played in the Frontier League. Ted Salini played Oklahoma State for Team Canada. Greg Heffernan played two years in the minors, played at Galveston. Uh, man, like some of these guys that we have is – is truly remarkable because really we live in Canada. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> and, but for these guys to take the time, the thing that makes me the happiest is, you know, we, it's not like we practice one time a week. We practice three, four times a week. And for these coaches to take the time out of their daily lives to, you know, they could be home with their significant others or families. They come to practice and help these kids develop and make them good men. Um, that, that, that means a lot to me. And then, like I said, obviously Harmony, she's been a whirlwind this year. Fantastic. Helping me out with the organization and the communication aspect of it. Um, and then obviously the coaches, they, they take over all the baseball stuff. Right. So, and I, and for me, 
I like it. I'm, I'm more of a, I, I do coach the 17 year team. I'm more of a rover now. I'm more of a, I get to see everything. And I found myself this year, even the indoor sessions. Yeah, it's a grind. And it's like, man, when are we going to go outside? But I find my, myself having a little bit more time to be able to work with players and talk to families about the future and how we can get their, I guess their son to the next level and how we need to get there. Right. Back in the day, it was just, I didn't have time to do this stuff. I didn't have time to talk to families, which in an organization like this, you have to make time to talk to families, no matter whether it's good or bad conversations, you still need to make time. And so that's why, you know, all these people that surround myself in the organization, um, they make it easier. They're all on board and they're all in the same, they're all in the same, they're sending the same message. That's the most important thing. There's not one guy that's, you know what? We don't care about education or student athletes. You know, it's <laughs> everybody is focused on let, let's get these kids, you know, working and building their time right. So when we do coach them, you know, everybody's on the same page. Everybody's getting the same message, right? And so that's what I want people to learn about us. Like we don't like we don't try to market too much. You know, we're a simple organization, hardworking organization that just you know, whatever we get or wherever we come from, it doesn't matter. We're, we're going to work hard and we're going to prove you wrong kind of thing. And, and we have for the past, you know, ever since I guess we could play after COVID, um, we've been playing really well. We've been producing really good players at the next level, man. And it's like, and then you see when you start doing that kind of stuff, I've noticed like players want to play for us and coaches wanting to come coach for us. And, um, it's just, it's just different. And it, it's a good different for me. Like a, even with my family life too, I got a, I got a, a wife, she's a nurse. I got two young children and my daughter's in gymnastics. My son's playing hockey, baseball, whatever. And I'm finding myself having a little bit more time to go hang out with them. Right. And which, which is important because you need to balance your life. We're not, if as, if as, as coaches aren't balancing our life, how do we expect these kids to go there and balance their life? right? The work and family. So that's what I could say. I just, like I said, the moral of the story is our, our support staff, our, our coaches, our administration staff are, I couldn't have it any other way. Wouldn't have it any other way. So. All right, I got, got one more for you. Um, I, um, I, I'd love to hear, um, you know, I, I hear the excitement in your voice. I hear, you know, where you guys, you know, are today, but Five years from now, if you could, you know, have a crystal ball, um, what would the Ontario Nationals program look like? Man. <laughs> so five years from now. So that's a lot of our young players right now, too. You know what? Um, it'd be nice to have a couple of draft picks. That'd be that'd be cool. I know we have a lot of good talent in the organization, a lot of guys that are working hard and extremely well. Um a lot of a uh, couple more uh, alumni that come back and coach for us, showing why student athletes do matter. Um, even a couple more championships. How about that? You know, championships are fun. Winning's fun. Uh, honestly, it's just I like where we are today. Five years down the road, who knows what's going to happen? But the main thing that I want to say is if, if from this day forward, if we look at this five, five years from now, and we look at this conversation we've had and, and I'm still in the same area where it's like, I'm still preaching student athlete. I'm still preaching this kind of stuff. And I still have that same message and we're still sending kids to school. I'll be happy. 